Uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your relationship with Theatre Square? Uh, my name is Tom Farrell, and I lived in this, uh, the, the Theatre Square area for about 18 years. Um, so, um, what is your um, personal experience as a visitor of Theatre Square? Um, as a visitor, um, well, I first came here it was um, just a, the contrast of the neighborhood. It was kind of an old part of St. Petersburg and not very big buildings, and then all of a sudden this is where these two massive theaters sticking out, surrounded, kind of, surrounded by canals. It was a beautiful contrast. And your professional experience with the space? Um, professional, I've, uh, run a, I've run a bar for the last 10 years in uh, right in the middle of the theater square. Um, what is your most memorable experience with the theater square or your favorite thing about the square? Um, most memorable experience? It's hard to say. There's been so many memorable experiences. Uh, but one of the things I like most about Theater Square is um, it's a city of five million people, but it, this little neighborhood is almost like a small town. And coming from a place like Virginia, especially a small town from outside of Richmond, um, people actually say hello and wave, and you kind of know everybody. People pop in for a cup of coffee, or it's a kind of a village mentality here, which I like. Small town surrounded by a massive, huge megapolis. Um, how would you define the space, as in the borders, the buildings, what does it encompass in your definition? Well, the square itself is, ironically, isn't even a square. I mean, it's, it's crisscrossed by roads and canals, but it, it, the, square, the square used to be there before there was, the roads were there. Um, the square is, is, is a space that is kind of the center of a um, It's an artistic center, but it's also a place of work for a lot of people. So this is this cultural center, say one of the cultural centers of St. Petersburg, not the most important uh, cultural center from a performing arts point of view of St. Petersburg, but also because of the, the size of the, the, at least two of the big, the conservatory and the, and the Marinsky Theater. It's it's a big place of uh, a big place of work. So you, and also you have a couple of um, you have a couple of schools. Besides, you have a sports academy here, and you have a, some middle schools, there's a, a music school. Um, you have a, there's a lot of energy here, a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's a mix of a lot of energy from academic to cultural to just people working. Uh, so, so it has a bit of a buzz to it. Oh. Do, you any, do you know anything about the history of the space or the building itself? No, a little bit. Oh, could you tell us about that? Well, you probably already researched it, but uh, where to start? Uh, this, this spot was kind of off the beaten track when the city was built, uh, was started. Um, obviously there was a ship, there was the shipyard, the Admiralty Yard here, very close by, and New Holland. But in the early 19th century, or even the late 18th century, I can't remember exactly, this, the Stone Theater was built here. And that, from, from then on there was a, uh, things kind of added on to the, the square, making what it is today from the Stowe Theater to the, the early uh, version of the Brinsky, which was actually a combination theater circus. And then, then you also, the, come the conversion of the, of the Stowe Theater to the conservatory. And then there's other schools popped up around it. But importantly, you never forget that the interesting thing about this, this neighborhood is that you had a very, very working class neighborhood right next to it, which was the you know, Colonna and, and the Admiralty Yard. And so you, almost once you pass the theater itself, it turns into a very, very uh, blue collar, uh, kind of rough and tumble area. And if you go right before you get to the theater square itself, it's the beginning of the Bolshoi Marskaya, which is one of the most expensive and, and, and uh, elite parts of the city. And right in the middle of that, bringing it all together, was, was, the, was these two big theaters. The first one theater, then two theaters, and then several theaters. And so you had an incredible mix, and on top of that, you had one of the largest prisons in the city, right, right neck on top of it. You had a very large arena market and this huge prison, and it's all the mix must have been amazing uh, back in the day. And there still is an interesting mix, but it's nothing compared to what I mean. 
just past the theater along Sedovaya, there was casinos and brothels and, and workers that, were, that had come in from outside of Moscow, basically uh, migrant workers to work in the shipyard. Just a few blocks away, you had bankers living, and then you had all of the, the actors and the singers and what have you. It must have been an amazing place. And then you also had prisoners, and the prisoners in the Litovsky uh, um, Zamak here, a lot of those prisoners actually had day passes depending on what their crime was. So they'd be walking around in different colored uniforms. So you'd have prisoners walk on day passes and walk around their different color, and the color of the uniform uh, described their crime. And so hopefully you'd have murderers walk around. But anyway, it was, uh, must have been a really interesting uh, place to see back then. How do you think the current use of the space relates to its historical roots? It, like I said, I think it, it barely, it's, it's a shadow of what it what must have been back then because for you to, so many things are gone, especially the, the prison, uh, the Bolshoi Marskaya, you can walk down the street and you see the buildings, but they're, they're not what they used to be. There's, first of all, there's not people actually really so living there, they're being used for different functions. The uh, working class neighborhood, it's still a working class neighborhood, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not a hustle and bustle of migrant workers building the Russian Navy like in the, in the hay, it's heyday. So it's, it's kind of a shadow itself. Having said that, obviously you can see with the construction going on, there's there's an attempt, when, when this is this is almost being finished, the, the Marinsky 2, you got the Marinsky 3, it's been finished. If they ever get New Holland going, the potential to, not, it'll never be like it was in the heyday, at least the, the contrast, but the, the potential of this neighborhood to be uh, exploited, I don't know if it's been properly used, but exploited is there. And I've seen, see designs for it, the way they're going to use it and make it more of a pedestrian, hopefully, because I live here. Um, but it's going to, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know if I'm qualified to say how it's going to be better or worse, but it's, it's going to be better than it is now, probably, from just a, from the quality of life point of view, there's probably less dirty air here if they do make it finally pedestrian, more trees. But um, it's it's it'll never be I, it'll never be what it, what it used to be, and I can only imagine what it must have been. It must have been pretty amazing. Um, so we've heard that you've lived in several buildings around Theater Square. Um, do you know any of the history of that, or do you have special um, memories about these different places? Yeah, I've lived uh, up and down Kruka Canal, which is probably one of the, the, the most beautiful canals in the city. That the point I did. I lived on uh, House Number Seven. House 11 and House 7-11 and 5, 7-11 and 13 or 17, okay. anyway, along, along the canal. All those houses are very old. Um, uh, the dome number 7 was built in the 1830s or 1840s, but it's, it's been, it's had a remont. The Soviets did a cap remont on the place. And it was owned by, I forget the name, it's, it, it has a monogram up there, it's an F. Which is not typical for Russia. But I remember it was, a, it was a, a rich person who had a, back then they had these Dachlodny uh, domes, which was basically someone would build a, one of these big houses, and one floor would be theirs, and they'd rent out the rest. They called them Dachlodny domes. And that was a Dachlodny dome. Um, and uh, it's still a pretty, and it, it had a reconstruction, um, a capital reconstruction in the Soviet times in the, in the 60s, so it's in pretty good shape. Uh, the one just down from it, is also early 1800s. Um, it's a, it's a, it was a three-story building that um, well, later on, before the Soviets, actually added on two more stories. Um, it's an interesting building. Um, that that building, <clears throat> on the corner of uh, Rimsky Korsakov and Krukov, and in that building, uh, Muzersky lived. Uh, Pushkin uh, read to um, uh, what was the name of his mentor. Asked them again. His name is Mentor, the poet. Anyway, he read his first time, he made his first reading of, of the draft of Ruslan and Ludmilla in that, in that, because it's the name of that guy, very famous poet that was actually Pushkin's mentor and teacher. Anyway, he had an apartment in there that Pushkin, uh, at that time Pushkin was living on the Fontanka near Kruko. Um, who else lived in that building? Someone else lived in that building. Anyway, this <clears throat> I lived also. Obviously, I live now in this building, and uh, this is the court. This is Dikabrisa 27. The actual address is Glinki 357. And this building was a typical. There was a lot of buildings back in the, right before the fall of the empire um, that were they were they were not brothels, but they actually had there were there were hotels. And I don't know if you remember, like in uh, Dr. Shivago, the, the, uh, the 
Lara was set up in a room by her rich guy. Basically, that's what they, they had these uh, uh, apartments they would keep for their lovers. And uh, this is one of those. This was called the uh, Hotel Rose, this building right here. And people, people lived here as well, but also they kept their, their lovers here as well. So uh, Stravinsky lived in this building for a while. Um, Anyway, it's, there, there's so many people that lived in this neighborhood because of the, the, the crossroads, because it's theater square. There's a building you probably even looked right across from the building. I used to live in the big black granite looking building. It looks like it should be a Petrogradsky side, but it's, it's, it sticks out. Chalapin used to live there. Um, anyway, there's a lot of lot of people you know, that lived in this in this neighborhood. Actually, the Benoits lived right over here on the corner. Uh, there's a lot of Benoits, but I was at the Benoits lived over there for a while. It can actually go on and on and on. There's a, there's a great little books in Don Canadian that actually just they just have the addresses that say like along the Moika or along the Fontanka, and it'll go address by address every single house and who lived in there. I have a bunch of them. I used to know I can tell you I used to know all this stuff, but I lost count anyway. So but I recommend those books, they're awesome. So you mentioned that you think that um, with the new construction on the uh, theater square, um, you think that it will become more pedestrian? Well, that's the, I've seen, you, you never know how it ends up. Uh, the, the plan is to make it more pedestrian, they'd like to make it more pedestrian. There's a problem right now because, as you notice, there, this is one of the main arteries of traffic coming from the port, and coming from the, uh, the south of the city going north. So you got, you got all these, I mean, you, right next to one of the world's most famous theaters, you got these, these trailers, these uh, massive trucks going by all the, I mean, I know it's a upstairs, I hear them all, all the time. They, with the ring road they built, they're going to hopefully start moving that traffic at some point in the next couple of years away from the theater square and it'll be a bridge or a tunnel or something to get onto the, uh, uh, the ring road to the dam. And uh, this will hopefully go back to what it used to be, more of a pedestrian. There'll still be, I'm sure there'll still be uh, roads traffic going through here, but not like it is now. And that'll be wonderful. So, but we'll see. I've seen it. They've actually published some of the plans, but you never know how they actually ultimately implement them. And hopefully there'll be a metro here. So, so um, you think that the accessibility will get better? Um, do you think the accessibility right now is poor? It's or? horrible. That's really bad because the closest metro... I mean, if you really trek it, you can probably get there in 15 minutes, which is more like 20, 25 minutes. And it's always been a problem for the theater because you got some of these operas going late, really late. A lot of times people, because the metro closed, they're leaving before the opera's over. And uh, so it's the, the metro, the, there should have been a metro open a long time ago. They just keep putting it back for different reasons. And they're all sinful reasons, but they're definitely, there will be a metro here. I'm convinced of it. It has to be, especially with this huge investment. It's just a matter of when I... I I think I'll see it in my lifetime. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's, it's you, I guess you guys try to get here. It's not easy to get here. And from a point of view of a business, it's, it's difficult because there's so many other places to go now, and you, it, it, it's an effort to come here. It's a real effort to come to Houston, unfortunately. Well, we, you've answered all of our questions. Is there anything else you would like to add about the square? My favorite part of town. It's uh, for me. It's just not the square. It's the uh, the neighborhood. The square is the center of the neighborhood, and uh, it's unique. I've lived in several different parts. Of the St. Petersburg is like several different villages. They have very distinct characteristics. But uh, and I've lived in several of them. But this is my favorite. Again, it goes back to what I said before. There is a, a bit of a village feel here uh, because people come. And they they like I said. They live, even though it's five million people, a lot of these people come here just to work. They live out in the, in, the, the, in the suburbs, but they keep, they come back here and then you get to know everybody in a way, whereas you can live for 20 years in, in a suburb in St. Petersburg and no one, your neighbor won't even say hello to you in these big massive blocks. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice feeling I prefer it here, the canals are amazing, um, and it's exciting to see that there's finally some kind of progress coming on, so we'll be interested to see how it is in the future. Thank you for your time. Sure.